Uh, we are back. It's Bob McKinley podcast with uh, John Shannon. Pierre McGuire is uh, with us. And we've been talking about the Vancouver coaching situation, which is about to change. Well, has changed effectively. And uh, Bruce Boudreau is out. Rick Tockett is in. Um, you, so you think that Tockett will make, will have an impact on this team? I do. I really do. And uh, again, full transparency. I'm a bit biased. Um, when you win a Stanley Cup with somebody, I had the privilege of doing that with Rick. He was a player. I was a coach. Um, you, you develop an admiration. Uh, you see what the player goes through sure. to help get to the top of the mountain. But I also watched them coach. I watched them coach for the back-to-back -back Pittsburgh Penguin wins, and I also watched them coach in Arizona very closely. And uh, I do think he will make a difference. I really do. He lasted about, about four years in Arizona, something yeah, like you that. you got to remember, they weren't particularly good teams. No, but they he, never have been. You're, you're being very kind, Pierre. He was able to squeeze a lot of life out of some of those players. If you go watch some of the wins that they had, and I remember one game in particular, Pete DeBoer was coaching San Jose and, and Rick was coaching Arizona. I was there to do the game. It was kind of a weird scheduling situation for us at NBC, but I was there to do the game. And, and Arizona won the game. And, and the only way they won that game is talk it that night just happened to be really, really good as a coach in terms of matchups and game planning. And they beat San Jose. And that was re those San Jose teams back then were very, very good. Very good. How, how is, you know, the first, the first coaching job Rick had was um, he took over, I think, 21 yeah. games into yeah. the season in Tampa after Barry Melrose got hired coming out of the broadcast booth. It's all these yeah. TV guys getting rehired. You know, that's the problem. Um, well, can I tell you one thing? I think the best person for you to talk to would be Steven God. Stamkos. Oh. Nobody wants to talk about this. Steven Stamkos was just starting out his NHL career, and there were people internally in Tampa who said, he's not going to make it. He's overrated. He's not that good a player. And talk it created a schedule for Steven Stamkos. And I can't believe nobody's really brought this up. And, and Taki created a schedule for Steven and Steven started to flourish and his game started to go like this and this and this. And everybody's like, wow, that's magical. How'd that happen? It happened because Rick Tockett put the work in as a head coach, not as an assistant coach, but as a head coach with a future star player. Now has over 500 goals in the national hockey league as in a multiple Stanley cup winning player. I mean, as a captain, it's it, Steven Stamkos could be the, would probably be the best person for anybody to interview about what Rick Tockett can do as a coach. Well, and, and but learning on the fly like that to be a head coach, uh, I, I'm not sure that that would be a positive in learning what to do right or what to do wrong. Would it be? No, but if you look at some of the coaches that he played for and some of the situations that he was in, that's probably the best way to learn. So for Rick, he learned being on very good Philadelphia Flyer teams that had a hard charging coach when they were very good under Mike Keenan. So he learned the dictatorial side of it. Then he comes to Pittsburgh and he's playing for Scotty Bowman after playing for Paul Holmgren in Philadelphia. And so you had a little bit tough, a little bit, you know, let the player play under Paul. And then he comes to Pittsburgh and he plays for Scotty. And all of a sudden he's learning about different things as well. Um, so he's had, he's played for a lot of coaches that have been very competent. Larry Robinson out in Los Angeles, um, and I think you learn a lot from the people that you're around as a player, and then you can institute those ideologies when you become a coach. One thing is true in I, just about every sport, but certainly hockey, and that is there have been very, very few great players who went on to become great coaches. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm intrigued by what you think of that. Um, well, we we ahead, know, Bob. yeah, we, we know that they, like somebody like Gretzky, you know, he did things that you can't teach really uh, and maybe didn't think about the, the stuff that he did as hard. You know, he, he worked a little differently. So his coaching record was mediocre at best. With bad teams. Think about he, had that? Bad, he had bad teams too. <laughs> Let's well, I, I give you that. That's why he said at best but still. It can be debated. Who are the, who are the best players that have had success in the national hockey league? I'm going to say two of them, Jacques Lemaire, was yeah. a phenomenal player and a tremendous coach. Would you agree, John Shannon? Yeah, no, that's right. Okay, the next great one, I thought Larry Robinson was a fantastic coach. Yeah, but they have one thing in common. What, they were in Montreal? Yeah. Okay. And, and they, 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 Well, what they, does that they, mean, though? They, well, they, they, they sat there and got tutored by the greatest coach of all time. So this is my point. So what Rick Tockett went through to become the head coach 
in now in Vancouver is look at all the coaches that he played for over time and look at some of the winning situations he was in. Now, did Philadelphia win the cup when he was there? No. But did they go to the final? Yeah. And was he an important part of it? Yeah. And, and he learned from Keenan. He learned from the late E.J. McGuire. There were, there were some really good mm-hmm. coaches that Rick, Rick was around that he could learn from. But I think, you know, if you look at Rick's years in Pittsburgh, um, he had a chance to learn from Scotty and I, I can tell you right now and Mike Sullivan, by the way, he learned from him too, as a, as an assistant, I think he's learned from a lot of really good coaches. I can just he, he, here's, here's, here's the thing about, and, and Bob's point about great players. We've touched on this a few times before. Yeah. I still, I still remember sitting in the seats at Chicago stadium when Bobby Orr was an assistant coach for seven games for the Chicago Blackhawks. And he skated off the ice after throwing his stick into the seats because the players couldn't understand what he understood about the game. And there was no patience. You know, his vision and his patience were totally different than when the, the players he was working with. Tockett as a player was a great player, but he had to work at it every single day. There wasn't that's, an ounce of it. energy that he didn't give up. He was that way when he played for the Don Mills Flyers, Pierre. That's how good he was as a 15-year-old. Everything came. It was gritty. It was greasy. He worked his tail off every day in practice and in every game. And I think that's the biggest difference between when you have great players with natural instinct and have vision for the game or a guy like Tockett, who was a winner most of his NHL career, but had to actually work his tail off every day to become a winner. Yeah. So we agree 100%. And that's why I said some of the things I said earlier in the show. But here's what I would tell you about Rick, too, that I, I think is really important. Um, he's amazingly loyal. Um, if you were to talk to, whether it's Craig Berube, when talking and Berube were in Philadelphia, he, they'll tell you. Um, if you were to talk to Mark Recchi, uh, he would tell you. We're, we're, I'm talking about big personas in the National Hockey League. Ask Mario Lemieux about Rick Tockett. Um, but just to go back to what Bob and John, you were both talking about with great players, I've, I've sat, you know, I've been in coaching meetings where Mario has been a player and I said, his nickname's Ace. Ace, do you understand that? Yep, I understand that 100%. And he would put it right into practice, in-game adjustment, pre in, in, in between playoff game adjustments, he'd put it into practice. But if you ever to ask him, like, how'd you do that toe drag against Minnesota um, in game four or game two or whatever? He'd say, I don't know, I just did it. Ask Wayne right. Gretzky, how'd you do some of that stuff? Yeah, I don't exactly. know, I just did it. And exactly. that's why I think great players have a hard time being coached. They can't relate their practical experience to what they actually have to to the players that they're coaching. Whereas hardworking, industrious players, they can tell you, this is how I did this. This is why I did this. 